Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dovetail Box series. In this video, we're gonna remove these blocks, flush off the joinery and then see what we're left with. Let's get going. Okay, so firstly, let's have a look. If these blocks will just, look at that. They will just pop straight off because in the last episode, we used that nice little trick of masking tape and super glue so that they stay attached to the box without actually damaging or sticking to the tails themselves. That is beautiful, that's exactly what we want. And you might get little remnants of masking tape stuck in places from where the glue has stuck it down, but it's not the end of the world. We can just plane off or chisel off those last remaining bits while flushing off this joinery. And then we've got this tape on the inside, which was stopping the glue squeeze out from sticking to the inside of the box and staining it. So again, this might require a little bit of chiseling in places. So we're now upright in a vise, nice sharp chisel. That should just peel away these remaining bits of tape. This is extremely light pressure here. I'm not pushing in at all. All right, so that is the inside faces cleaned of glue and squeeze out and all that. Uh, you may have seen that even though I was using low tack masking tape here, there was a few marks left over from the adhesive of it. That's perfectly normal. If you want to, you can resand those inside faces with 240 grit now. Um, but to be honest, I'm going to leave it until just before I attach the bottom of the box, because if I sand the inside now, I'm just going to be handling the box for the next few hours. I'll get greasy fingerprints on the inside and I'll have to resand it again. So I'm going to leave it for now, but I will be buzzing over that with 240 grit a little bit later, just to make sure those inside faces are looking lovely. Okay, so now we move on to flushing off the joinery. And if you've got a lovely deep vise like I have here, this job is a breeze. As you can see, you can clamp it low in the vise like that and plane the top face. Easy. However, for those of you who don't have the luxury of having a deep vice, perhaps you're working with a quick release or you're working on your dining room table, I don't really know, this is the way to flush off external joinery. And it's nice and simple. Get a bit of MDF, wood, plywood, I don't know, just some sort of flat board that fits inside the box perfectly. And you can see where we're going with this. You clamp that to the side of the workbench or table that you're working on. You can get away with just using a thin bit like this for both the long side and the short side of the box, but with the long side, see it's gonna wobble a little bit. So it's better to make two, but you can get away with just using one if you need to. Right, so quick lesson on planing carcasses and boxes flush. What you want to do when flushing off the ends of dovetails like this is don't plane all the way through off the other side of the material. It'll be okay when you originally push the plane in, but as you come off the edge here, the end grain on the tops of these dovetails is gonna split away because the fibers are coming up and there's nothing supporting them from behind, so they just break out and you end up losing huge chips of material off the front of your beautiful box. So just keep an eye on that. When you're plane in, what you wanna do is instead work to halfway. So we'll get a nice fine cut with the plane, not cutting anything at the moment. And as I'm planing, I'm just slowly bringing the blade out until it bites. There it is. And I like to skew the plane when I'm going through end grain in order to reduce the pitch of the plane. These are a few tips that were shared in my video how to plane correctly. So have a look at that if you want a bit of a refresher on that. And there we go, that's that one done. And as you can see, we've stopped halfway. Take this off into the other side. And here I'm just removing the little step left over from coming in from both directions. And that's just a case of landing the plane and then taking it off again. Doesn't take much. So the short face is nice and simple. Plane to halfway, flip it round, plane the other way. The longer faces, however, this is where you wanna be a bit more careful. The reason being, on this top edge here, we've got some unsupported end grain. So even if I plane through to midway, if I catch that back edge here with a plane coming from this direction, all that end grain is gonna break out and that is gonna be very prominent on the front of the box. So what we're gonna do with this top edge is come in from the top and then steer it background so that it's in line with the side of the box. Now the end grain poking up here may get in the way as you're planing through from this direction. So what I'll do is flush off the ends of these two pins to begin with. And there you go, they're out the way. There's a little bit poking up here, but we will remove that. 
coming in from this direction. As you can see, we're just steering it as it comes onto the box so that no breakout is caused. And that's the top sorted. Finish off that middle pin. And there you go, that's the basic premise behind flushing off the long and the short faces of the box. But before you go ahead and do all of that, there is another little trick you can use to your advantage when flushing off this box, which is a great way of hiding small gaps in your dovetails. So we've covered the fact that end grain will break out if you plane it while it's unsupported, such as this top edge. But this is an instance where you can actually use that to your advantage. You can see on the side of this tail, there's a tiny gap there, which I'm not too happy with, and I'd like to try and disguise that. And a great way to disguise it is to actually break out this end grain intentionally so that it fills that gap and pushes right up against the side of the tail. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. The first one is a little bit more barbaric, which we're not going to be doing today, but I'd like to share with you anyway. With the end grain, what you can do is get a small hammer, like a ball peen hammer or a little jeweler's hammer or something like that, and just tap the end grain. Perhaps soak it in a little bit of water to begin with, but by tapping the end grain, what you're going to do is start mushrooming those fibres and start spreading them out. You don't want to go too far with this to the point where you can't actually flush out those hammer marks, but by doing a few taps with a hammer, the end grain will spread out and it will start to fill those gaps. And in fact, this technique works particularly well with oak. It works well for other timbers, but oak is where I've had the most success with it from. So the second technique involves planing the end grain in this direction so that the side of the pin breaks out and fills that gap. Now we have got to be careful with this because going this way means we have potential of going off the top and therefore breaking out the end grain on the top here. So we're gonna to have to kind of come in from both angles like this and try and be really, really precise with this. Using a block plane would be ideal at this stage, but to be honest, I think we'll get away with just using a smoothing plane. So what I'll do to begin with is I'm gonna flush off this joint on the bottom because the only thing that will do is get in the way. Okay, and then I'm probably going to do the top, but I'm being really careful not to catch this precious end grain that I need to preserve in order to break out into that gap. All right, so that's almost there. There's a little bit to remove, but I reckon we could do that coming from this direction. So put a little bit of glue in there, like a tiny bit, just to hold the end grain in place while it breaks out, and then carefully plane over it, and you'll see that gap will completely disappear by the time I'm done with this. Sorted. And as you can see, that's a really good way of hiding gaps in joints naturally without resorting to the glue and the dust methods that most people want to resort to. So that it, don't get me wrong, it won't do wonders. It will close up gaps of, let's say, half a millimeter and less. If you have gaps of more than half a millimeter, then you probably want to resort to putting bits of veneer in those gaps, or maybe slicing some shims off some offcuts you've got of the box, cram those in there, put a bit of glue in there, flush that off with a plane. Stuff like that, the general public won't see, but it will be something that you notice every time you look at the box, which is often worse. There is one other thing I'd like to share with you when flushing off these sides. What you need to ensure is that you haven't gone absolutely mental flushing off all of that joinery. So this rectangle here represents a plan view of the box. And what's really easy to do at this point is focus too much on flushing off the joinery and not bringing these faces down to the same level as the areas you flushed off on the corner. So what that will look like, it's very exaggerated, is you take off the joinery there and there, there, and then coming in from these faces as well. There we go. That is a very exaggerated view of what might happen with your box if you focus too much on flushing off the joinery and not enough on bringing these sides down level. What you want to do is instead work as much as you can to halfway, come to the other side, flush it off from this direction as well, and then check to see if you've got a little peak in the middle of those long faces. This is more likely to happen on the long edges of the box as opposed to the short faces, but it's worth checking all over. So what we'll do is get a nice straight ruler hold it up to the light and just check that there's no peak in the middle of these faces or more importantly, that the corners aren't dropping off from flushing off the joinery. So all of this box looked good apart from this one face. There seems to be some little peak or something around here, I think. 
So land the plane on and just sort of take it off. There we go. Just do it from this face just to be sure. You can see I'm not actually touching the joinery at this point. I'm just landing it here, taking it off here or so. Should be fine. Let's have a look. Spot on. So we can now move on to flushing off the bottom of the box. So when doing this, it's quite useful to have a flat surface to actually check the box on. If you've got a machine bed, like a table saw or a planer, then it would be ideal. But to be honest, a piece of plywood or MDF is usually pretty good, providing it's thicker than 12 millimeters, half an inch or so. So I'll put it on there and just check there's no rocking going on corner to corner. Seems to be a little bit going on here. But before fixing any of those rocking issues, what we'll do is just flush off the bottom if it needs it. So because we lined up the tails so carefully when transferring them, these are all feeling pretty good. Got a small step on this one here and maybe there as well. So we'll focus on those two first. So when flushing off this face, I've got to be really careful not to catch the side grain going along this way because it might cause it to split off. What you can do is attack it at 45 degrees and then what it's going to do is shear this inside face so the shaving comes off in this direction as opposed to just being punched straight off the corner. So we'll start at 45 and then once we clear the side grain on this edge, that's where you can straighten up the plane and then do that. And now it's flush on the bottom, we will check for rocking. And it's very easy at this point to remove material from the wrong corners and therefore make the rock worse. So if it's rocking corner to corner this way, then it means that these two are the ones that we need to remove material from. So I'll just mark those with a little star or whatever so I don't get it mixed up. And then we'll carefully remove those areas. So what I'm going to try and do is steer around this corner in order to evenly remove that entire corner as well as the corner down here as well. So we'll start maybe like halfway along this component. And then as we get to the corner, go to 45 degrees so that we don't break off any side grain. Come across and then just lift up. All right, so that's that one sorted. Let's do the opposite corner. And then keep checking as you go. So we've still got a little bit of a wobble there, which means these corners are still high. And the other thing we need to make sure we're doing is not causing any of those sides to dip off, similar to what would have happened if we focused too much on flushing off this joinery. If you focus too much on these corners and not enough in the center, you're gonna get a rock from all four corners because it's gonna be rocking there, 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 and there. Not in the corners, but instead in the center of the components. All right, and what that leaves you with is a box with a perfectly flat face, flat sides, flushed off joinery, ready to move on to the next stage. So just to reiterate a few of the points that we covered in this, when planing down the faces, don't plane off the opposite end because you'll end up breaking out the end grain and you will curse and just end up lobbing this thing across the room in frustration. Instead, work to halfway. You'll get much better results that way. If you need to hide any small gaps, then plane the end grain in the direction of the gap so that it breaks out to fill it. Put a little dab of glue in there to begin with just to make sure that it holds. And another point is when flushing off the joinery, make sure not to focus too much on flushing off the joinery. Make sure to bring that entire face down so that it's flat and level with the corners so that there's no bumps that are gonna cause you issues later on in the build. The same goes for flushing off the bottom to ensure that there's no rock or anything in the box after assembly. So that is pretty much it for this lesson. You're now ready to move on to the next one, which you can do so by clicking the link below. And if you haven't already, please press the big round subscribe button to the left-hand side of this video. I'll see you in the next lesson.